The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the February 14th, the uh, magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Steve e. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always let those fingers do the walking. That means go ahead and send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tiger's Den. Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a magical Monday. Of course, happy Valentine's Day to everyone out there. Uh, great to be with you. Hope everybody had a terrific weekend. So let's go ahead and get this show started. Um, right now, we've got a mixed bag out here. Let's get to the uh, screen out here. Oops, what happened there? Hmm. Okay, we've got it. So we've got the Dow trading down 27 points. The S&P is up 5. NASDAQ 100, 115 to the upside. Russell's up um, 4. Semis are up 38. Trannies are up 177. New York Stock Exchange is struggling, up 71 points. Maybe the bond funds in there that are pulling that down. NASDAQ Composites to the upside. Wilshire's to the upside. Yeah, this is Monday. It's not Turnaround Tuesday, is it? Or is it? Well, we'll go check out those levels where that would give us the indication of a turnaround, uh, well, pre-Tuesday turnaround, meaning a turnaround Monday. Gold's up 20 bucks, trading at 1861 silver, 45 pennies trading out at 2382. Lights we crewed up a buck 11, 9421 is the print there. Lead the charge dollar-wise, the upside is Amazon up 95 bucks, that's 3%. Booking Holdings 41, 1 and 6 tenths percent. Google 34, 1 and a quarter percent. Mercado Libre is up 3 and a half percent, or 37 buckaroonies. Tesla is up 20. 25, that's 3% to the upside. Lead the charge to the downside. You've got C Limited, ADS, SEs, the Turkish symbol, 15% or 23 bucks to the downside. Moderna is off 20 or 12%. Gravity has lost its gravity. It's falling. It's down 27% off about 17 bucks. Bionitech is off 15, down 9% as well. So let's go take a look at the. Uh, Let's go take a look at the indices out here. So all the indices. So here you've got basically your nine primary indices. Upper left-hand panel. Let's just start with, uh, we'll go through it one by one. So here we've got the Dow in the upper left-hand uh, upper left hand corner. What has it done? It has so far tested and so far rejected the January 24th swing point. Now we'll go look at the diamonds to get a, a volume and metrics. My recollection is it's on light volume. If you can't bust them down, price will try to bust them up. It says it could take it, run for the swing point high from just uh, three days ago. That is its message. I would say that message is more likely than not if we get the S&P 500 to close back above 44.17.35. You're at 44.22. If you get a close back above that, you'll have a rejection of that January 24th key swing point out there. And again, suggest to move back to about the 4,600 level. In the case the nasdaq 100 it's got some more work to do 14 532 57 to be exact is its nut that's the number that price must close above in order to reject that january 24 swing point the russell stronger than the last three price hasn't even got down towards its swing point but its swing point is not the 24th its swing point was on january i believe it was the 28th let me just make sure out here 
Yes, it was. January 28, 19650 is the level. The semiconductor index, also strong like bull. It has not gotten down to its swing point, which is also the 28th out there. That number is 330417. The trannies, they are rejecting the January 24th swing point, and they'll do that with a close about 15050. The Nasdaq Composite, a close above 13,876 and change or at 13,885. That will be a test and rejection of the swing point. New York Stock Exchange has made it made its way down towards, but didn't get all the way down to that 16,439 level. So New York Stock Exchange actually is kind of stronger out here by not even getting down and testing the level. But, of course, not testing that level doesn't provide us with a lot of certainty out here. And the Wilshire 5000, just to get a feel for the U.S. markets out here, that has tested so far and rejected that key swing point. 44, 523, 20 is the level that you're looking. So if you get a test and rejection of these swing points, what that at least suggests, we should at least see a two-day bounce out here. Maybe it's more than that, but at minimum, that's what I'd be expecting. And those price targets would be their most recent swing point levels. If we take a look at the ETFs out there, so just our four index ETFs out here, you'll see in the upper left-hand side, you've got the SPY. So the volume that it needs to trade less than is $252 million. You're at $54 million at $112. There's no way it's going to have that kind of volume. So any close of a 440.38 is going to be a rejection of that swing point on lighter volume. Remember, Tom's one that coined the phrase, if you can't bust them down, price will try to bust them up. What does that mean? Well, the bust them up is the prior swing point high, and that's the high from uh, February 9th, and that's in the 457-ish range out there. If you go down now, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to the Qs momentarily, but again, on the Dow Diamonds, that swing point high was 344.12. We've already hit that today. We've gotten down to a low of 343.75. The volume so far today is 3.9 million shares. On January 24th, the volume was 29 million shares. Kind of getting the picture out here. Not enough sellers to bust out those lows from January 24th out there. If you can't bust them out to the downside, what does the market typically try to do? Bust them to the upside. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000, very bottom panel out here, price has not made its way down to that January 28th swing point. But you can just take a look at that volume metrics at 65 million shares on that day. You're at 18 million shares today. And inside the NQ, that's the one that is trading with inside the swing point. So that is really the wild card here. The swing point going from a low of 334.15 to a high of 353.98. A close above 353.98, though, uh, will be a test and rejection of that January 24th high on much lighter volume. The volume on that January 24th day was nearly 200 million shares. Today, you're at 43 million shares. So watch those numbers out here. What happens if we get three of the four that give us that rejection level? Well, what that means is we have three of the four that gave us that rejection level. And we really would have to dig down into the intraday charts for the NQ or something to see what it is that we see out there. Well, then, Steve, well, why don't you just do that? Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. So thanks for asking that question. So let's go take a look at the NQ, since that is the wild card out here, and see if we can find any kind of patterns that are in play. So we'll switch over to our eight panel charts here, and uh, let's begin um, at the upper right, where we've got a 30-minute time frame chart. So on the 30-minute time frame chart here for the NQ, and let's go ahead and do a deep dive. Well, we don't have a time for a deep dive. We've got about 10 seconds. Here what we've got is a TD9 count top, and if price is able to close above the high of that pattern, the high of that pattern is 14,376.50. That's going to suggest a rally up to the 14,766 level. That'll take care of rejecting that swing point if it happens intraday. When we get back from this break here, we'll continue looking at the NQ. Then we'll shift over to some of the requests to take a look at the SMHs um, and a few other things. Uh, and of course, I would love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the NQ out here. We're looking at our eight-panel chart, our multi-time frame. So inside the NQ, you have that Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. We've got a TD9 count top. We know that if price closes above the high of that pattern, that high of that pattern is on bar number eight. That high out there was at 14,376.50. That's going to give us a signal of a move higher. That next target to the upside would be in that 14,766 14, area. On the 60-minute time frame chart, you have a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Was a key reversal bar at six o'clock this morning that confirmed that pattern no topping signal here price is above the top of its uh, profile so 14.672.50 is a price target the 120 minute chart has a buy the d point pattern out here you can more easily see the a to b equals cd pattern in the five hour chart that's the very right hand panel that was confirmed with that three river morning star a uh, price is likely targeting the 14 473 level that is the top of its profile in the 240 minute chart this is where we'll really get a feel both the 30 minute and i think the 240 minute chart right now will give you the best signals if there's going to be upside potential you've got the td9 count on the 30 and on the 240 minute chart price has made its way right up to that oscillator and change line so it closed about 14 395 598 is going to suggest to move to the 14600, 14745, 15052 level. And on the five hour chart, you've got a TD nine count bottom with this price target being 14426 or thereabouts. And any move above that would suggest higher price 14580, 14741, maybe even 15052. So even though on a daily chart, uh, the NQ doesn't have a bottoming signal or it's not test. It's testing the swing point. It's within the swing point, neither testing really the top or the bottom at this stage here. We can see that the NQs are certainly trying to form some type of uh, bottom here. So pay attention to what's going on in the others. We've taken a look at the index ETFs and everything that you need out there as far as where price would have to close above to give you a signal of a potential rally for the next couple of days out there. Of course, uh, all rallies are off the table. Uh, should there 
there be some kind of uh, military action uh, overseas, over in Ukraine out there. So, you know, but but right now what the markets are saying is they're not seeing that, at least right this moment, and uh, they're looking to a uh, rally. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the equity markets out there. Let's uh, start taking a look at some of the requests out here. The first request uh, coming in from uh, Nicholas. And Nicholas, let me get over to my uh, screen here if you give me a moment to do this. Uh, so, uh, sorry about that, folks. Just to uh, try to get rid of some of the trash that's in here makes it easier. Uh, actually, okay, so the only request out here by email so far is from Nicholas. So what Nicholas wants to take a look at is, great question. It was really about the SMHs. So let me get back to my three panel charts out here, and I'm just going to expand out the chart. So here's what uh, transpired in the SMHs at first. Now, when I say at first, I'm, ref I'm referring to, at, and Nicholas's question is about the A to B equals CD pattern. So originally, the A point on uh, the SMHs was the low from January 28th. The B point was the high from February 2nd. The C point was the low that formed on February the 4th. There was your A to B equals CD. Now, when that B point was passed, that's at the 284.04 level, the volume on that candle was 5.9 million shares. When it was passed on the trading day of February 9th, it was 10 million shares. That was a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside that should have given us a price projection of 301.16. However, what happened on the very next trading session that turned out to be somewhat of a false breakout because price was unable to stay above for two consecutive sessions at top of that daily profile at 287. Oh, you're not. I'm sorry. There's the two by four. Sorry about that. Well, that's that's a bummer out here. Now we'll put up the right screen. Thank you. Uh, and Dan, I got to give uh, Mr. Bill and Dan a direct earpiece into into my into in, earpiece into my ear. Yeah, you, you know what I mean out there. Just scream. Okay, so here's the A to B equals CD pattern uh, designated by the yellow uh, lines out here, and you can see that on the uh, twenty uh, on February 9th, price did close above the top of that profile. But you and I, we have this two consecutive sessions above resistance below support to uh, prove itself to us and that didn't now what nicholas's question was is was this a to b equal cd pattern negated based upon friday's movement out here and the answer is in essence it had to be adjusted because the c point that we were using is now in Friday's action was below that C point. So we certainly can't do that. But the other thing is, and doing the A to B equals CD pattern, the A point's real easy. So let, whoops, let me get rid of the uh, pattern. So let's draw in the, well, I'm going to draw in what the new potential one would look like, but we do not have an A to B equals CD to the upside inside of the SMHs out here. So I want to make that clear. But if you were to redraw one in here, you know, the A point is going to be the same. But now the B point out here has got to be the uh, trading session from February 10th. And the C point would be at this stage here would be Friday's lows out there. We can't use as the B point. We really can't use the trading session from uh, February 2nd out here and, and just use that and then move down to the uh, low of last Friday because the, uh, our B point, that doesn't make sense for a B point. You've got to use the highest high out here in this case, which turns out to be the uh, trading session from last Wednesday, February the 10th out there. So there would be your new A to B equals CD should it come to fruition. We don't have that just yet. So what you and I, our role here is to always take new information and to redraw the patterns if necessary. In this case here, we don't redraw the pattern. We are eliminating the pattern because there is no confirmed A to B equals CD inside of the SMHs as we speak. What there is, as you can see, is there is a consolidation with inside its daily profile. Now, if we take a look at the weekly time frame charts, there is a brand new weekly profile that is formed. If you're to see a move below 262.25 in the SMHs, you'd expect price to get down to test that 256.29 level. I'm not saying that's where price is going, but if price did close below 262.25, that would be its signal out there. So, Nicholas, great question. I hope that I answered it clearly for you and for everybody else. I think you intuitively uh, knew what to uh, do out there. So, again, thanks for writing in. The next question coming in from the uh, Tiger's Den. Uh, give me a moment. The first question is um, uh, from CF. CF is the ticker symbol that we're going to take a look at. So CF is – can't remember – CF Industries, that's why I can't remember. So CF Industries out here, uh, moving to the downside today, just consolidating. Also, it almost looks like the SMH chart, right? You had a close on Friday above the top of its profile, back inside of today, so it really wasn't a breakout. And this suggests that perhaps price is going to go test the support level of 67.95. Um, if you give me a moment here, I'm going to switch. Well, i got to pull up my other charts here. 
and I didn't have that ready to go. The weekly time frame price is back inside the top of its weekly profile, but we're early in the game here. And so price may just be targeting that little rising trend line, which this week would be somewhere around the um, – 6630 ish type area out there. As I take a look at CF on a daily basis, what really is transpiring today, SNP, is you're getting a confirmed road momentum indicator top. So price is moving higher, doing less relative energy. You've got your bear sash candle. Now, this suggests that all all this really tells us is that price should go test support. So 6795 is that first level. If that fails to hold the support, then what CF should do is get down to 5986. So that's a daily message. The weekly message out here is the potential as well for Rhodes Mintum Indicator Signal. That suggests pulling back to 59 to 6250 out here. And the monthly time frame chart um, don't really have enough right now to uh, give you a, any type of clear message. I don't really see a sell point out here. But the daily and weekly are suggesting that what CF should do is continue to pull back further. That first level is going to be 67.95, then 62.51, then 59 bucks, and below that 50, well 59.86. Steve Rhodes with TFNN would love to hear from you, folks. 877-927-6648. I know I would remember the phone number. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. So the next request in the Tiger's Den was to take a look at Amazon, which is trading above support of its daily profile. That's at the 3072 level, above support of its weekly profile, 3017, and above the support of its monthly profile, 3059. So we can summarize this and say, so far, Amazon is holding key levels of support. If we take a look at my white background charts out here, we're also going to see that what price has done is it pull, has pulled back to test and so far reject that oscillator and change line. That's at 3029. So price would really need to close below 3029 to suggest a run for its lows, which looks like that might be on January 24th, or maybe it was the 28th out there for Amazon. So support is held. Now, if price can clear uh, 31.74.68, you should make a run for the 32.76 level, perhaps even 34.28. That's the message from the daily time frame. The weekly chart out here says, well, hold on a minute. We've got a nice TD9 count bottom. Oscillator and change line changed colors. Last week was a test and rejection of that level. Looks like price wants to take another run at it. If price can close above 3204s and change, uh, let's just call it 3206 or 7 or 8 or something like that. Then you should see a move to 3328 or 3483. So the weekly chart seems to be the one to really keep your eye on on a monthly basis out here as we take a look at it. Um, yeah, I'd say the weekly uh, time frame. So the daily suggests um, moving higher. Support is held out there and 3276 may be where that rally would stop but uh, if you get to 3276 you're going to be above the weekly oscillator and change on that would suggest a further rally so that's what i see when i take a look at the charts for amazon my apology i don't recall who inside the tiger's den asked for it might have been mr bill i'm not sure but then there was also a request for mosaic mos and i don't recall who asked that request doesn't matter if we take a look at the daily time frame chart for mosaic we have a td9 count top and now we might be getting a roads momentum indicator top uh, right now we have a bear sash candle so that would be confirming that pattern you've got two tops the two tops make it uh, better than um, the four tops are you kidding me eh, never no one could be better than the four tops, right? Uh, so, no, it doesn't matter how many tops you've got out here. One top is good. But at this stage, price is trading right now below 44.78. That's a key level to watch. That's the oscillator and change on it. Price closes above that level. Then our signals are really neutral, more so than anything else. If price closes below that, even though price made its way back to one area of support, 43.84, 42.36 is wide open, and 40.13. When we take a look at the daily chart for Mosaic, the weekly chart for Mosaic, right now we just have an inside bar, but you do have a TD9 count top. And that says price should pull back that oscillator and change line about the 42... 42.93 uh, range right now. If price were to close below that, that would tell us about a further retracement. The monthly chart out here for Mosaic, I don't have anything other than price running into resistance at that TD9 count breakdown level, which was priced at 47.68. So overall, what do we see when we take a look at Mosaic? Looks like it wants lower price, and that'll be confirmed if you get a close below 44.79. So I hope that helps you out. Uh, and again, I apologize who made the request out there. And I think that the last dead request wants to take a look at the NQ for the two-hour time frame chart. So let's do that. Let's pop this up on our screen here. And the question was, what needs to occur in order to generate some type of bearish signal? Uh, more bearish signal, a move lower, something like that, I believe, is the question. So here, if we take a look at the 120-minute chart here, uh, this formed with a TD9 count top as well as wave number seven, that's letter G. It makes that uh, run A to B, gets down to that uh, hammer candle that formed out here uh, around February 4th or 5th. That was the A to B point. Now I'm just going to move the same over to our C to D point. We can see here's the Three River Morning Star pattern. So with the NQ is done for the uh, two-hour time frame, it's generated a buy the D point, in this case here, really a Gartley buy pattern. So in those Gartley patterns, you typically have five different outcomes. The first one would be the 0 0.382 retracement. So how are we going to do that? Well, I'll do that momentarily. Let's first try to answer the question. What needs to occur in order to suggest that at least the lows of this morning are going to be tested would be a close below the oscillator and change line because it's red. And that's at the 14,225 level. So if you did see that, then, John, what that would be signaling to you is at least to move back to test that morning star pattern. If we don't get that, now what you also want to notice, you've got a confirmed bottom pattern. Price is inside a bullish structured profile. Price is trying for two consecutive bars. The second bar will complete at 2 p.m. And if there's a close above 14,225, 298, that would be your two consecutive bars above the center 
of that bullish structure profile. And that would then suggest a run up to the 14,473 level. If price took that out, then he'd be looking at 15,052. So in essence, you really have to take out the lows of the day to suggest a further run lower because you do have that valid bottoming pattern. And now you've got the bullish structure profile that price is trading in as we speak. Uh, with regard to the A to B equals CD pattern for the 120 minute time frame chart, let's do this here. Let me just come to this chart. Let me come to this chart. Let's get the uh, NQ out here. Let's get the March contract. And let's change the time frame to 120 minutes. And this way here, when we do this, then what we can do is really take a look at the A to B equals CD down pattern. And as well, we can take a look at the uh, retracement levels. So here from a retracement standpoint, we're going to go from the high of that pattern, the high of the A to B equals CD pattern, That's this, uh, which was also a TD9 count top. That was at 6 o'clock in the morning on uh, February the 2nd, and all the way down to the low of this morning. The low of this morning out here at about the 14.031 level. I hope that's what it was. 14.031. There you go. So in a Gartley buy pattern, there's basically five different outcomes. And the first outcome is just simply what we refer to as that dead cat bounce. It's really just a 0.382 retracement. What you should notice is the 0.382 retracement is just slightly above the, the top of the day of the, the 120 minute profile, which is 14,473. So if in fact we do see a rally up to that level, then what we should be looking at is that's where some people will get off the elevator. That may be an area where people would go ahead and take a short. John, if you're you're asking me what needs to fail to the downside to suggest you know some type of cascading move lower out here. Perhaps the other question is where would be the place to short on the 120 minute time frame chart? And I would say that first place would be in the 14,473 range out there, might be the first place. If price is able to take out both the top of that profile, but certainly the 0.382 level, then, then objective number two of the buy the D point or Gartley buy pattern would come into play. That's a 0.618 retracement, 14,790. The third level is a 0.786, 14,996. The fourth level is that 100% move of a move, 15,260. And then the fifth level would be that this would have formed an A to B equals CD to the upside. And if we were to do that, I can draw that pattern in here. For the A point, we're using the low of the pattern. This takes us back to January 24th. Makes sense. Our B point out here is what we use for our A to B equals CD to the downside. And our C point is the low of the morning and that one to one would then take us into the 15 585 ish area i'm not making that call that that's where this is headed to we have to always take this stuff one step at a time and we use new information as it as gets presented to us so voila there you go john i hope that helps answer your question and thanks so much there's also another question inside the uh, tiger's den i believe that was from dan and dan wanted to take a look at uh, nike out here so let me just get this set back up to the daily time frame. Let's get to our three panel chart. Let's put up the uh, ticker symbol NKE. And your question was, there was one more, Steve. Thank you. Okay. Nike weekly TD9 count bottom. Oh. All right. So give me a moment here. I've got to get those charts going, NKE. But as we take a look at Nike, the black background charts, price is trading below the bottom of its daily profile, still below the bottom of its weekly profile, tested at 142.72, and with inside the monthly profile. So let's do this here. When we get back from this break, let's take a look at Nike, see what kind of signal it's generating today. And the question is, is this a TD9 count bottom? I'm thinking it might be a Rhodes Mentum Indicator bottom. When we get back from this break, we're going to answer those questions. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at Nike for uh, Dan in the uh, Tiger's Den. The uh, low back on January 24th was 139.56. The uh, exact low on Friday was 139.56. The volume on the 24th was 9.7 million shares. The volume on Friday was 6.7. So was not able to bust through that uh, uh, swing point low from January 24th. It was test on lighter volume. Now price is below the bottom of its daily profile. So, Dan, the... Um, if we take a look at where the defense is at, that 143.77, if they can get through there, the secondary sitting at 146.58. The safeties are at 149.39 out there. So those are your battlegrounds that the uh, Bulls are going to have to try to get through with regard to Nike. If we take a look at my white background chart out here, oops, that's the wrong chart. That's the NQ. Let's try the NKE chart out here. What we have is we can also see that price was moving lower doing less relative energy. That triggers that roads meant to indicator signal. Uh, you already had one bottom pattern that had formed out here on the 28th, but price closed just below that, I believe, on Friday. So that pattern gets negated. But if we do get a bullish reversal candle today, that would then confirm another bottom signal. But you do have that test and rejection of the swing point on lighter volume. You've just got these battles up in front of you. The weekly time frame chart out here for Nike as we take a look at it. It uh, still has a TD9 count bottom. The only thing that would negate that, Dan, would be a close below the low of that pattern, which is 139.56. We didn't get that on Friday. So that pattern still remains in effect out here. And on a, a monthly uh, basis, don't have much here. This suggests that Nike actually wants to head, whoops, wants to head lower um, perhaps into the 126 to 135 ish type range out there. But right now, it looks like what Nike wants to do is make that attempt to move higher. Now, Dan, what I'd be watching is the 141.65 level. That's at red oscillator and change line. If price closes below that, well, then we probably go test that swing point again. Maybe we bust it out. I don't know. But if we don't close below it, that should just make it run for that 143.77 level out there. So thanks for the request. Hope that helps you out. Uh, there was a request inside of uh, where? Uh, email. This is Rich. And Rich wants to take a look at, well, he wants to take a look at Bitcoin and XBI. So let's look at XBI first and then we'll uh, actually let me do this here. Uh, give me a moment if you would, folks. Well, you don't have a choice, right? Because I'm the one that's controlling this. Uh, just looking for the chart that I really wanted to get to. Mm. There we go here. So Bitcoin, BTC, I think it's still in the February contract. I'm going to go ahead and we'll take, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Wow. 
All right, folks, so now you've got black on my screens. Give me a moment to get rid of that. Okay. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're back to uh, business here. And uh, let me get the, uh, sorry, a little bit of stumbling here. Let me get that Bitcoin chart, BTC. And I'm going to look at the March contract when we come back to it. So first, let's go take a look at um, XB, what was it? XBI, XBI. And this is for Rich out here. Um, and Rich, uh, with regard to, this is the S&P Biotech ETF out here. Right now, it's just consolidating with inside its daily profile. So your support level is at 88.59. It tried to bust out the top of that profile, which was 98.42. Tried to do that on February 10th, unable to do that. So I don't know, it's just consolidating with inside and you're kind of at midstream. Price is inside a new bullish structure profile that uh, uh, formed last week. It confirmed uh, this week out here. And this suggests as long as price remains above 90.95, we run to the 101.55 level. So look at that white background chart. Did we have any kind of bottom inside of XBI? And the answer is we do. TD9 count bottom. But uh, what we also see is how price went from that low, that bottom pattern, all the way up to where it should have failed, which was at 98.97. That's a TD9 count breakdown level. So I would say that, Rich, perhaps what's going to take place here is the XBI is going to pull back and test that 89.46 level to 88.59. If it can hold that, that could be the C point, could be the C point of an A to B equals CD. What it would be for sure is it would just still tell us that price is consolidating with inside that daily profile. So on a weekly basis with regard to the uh, this uh, sector, I don't really have anything other than mean resistance at 98 bucks, even Stephen. And on the monthly time frame, you've got a TD9 count bottom. So this is giving you the signals, the daily and the monthly. We don't have any kind of signal on the weekly here of that uh, bottom. That's too bad. But right now, I would say more likely than not, this uh, might want to pull back in that 88, 59, 89, 46 area. Rich, I hope that helps you out. So you also wanted to take a look at Bitcoin. So to do that, a couple of different things. Let me uh, move over to, I believe I've got Bitcoin and a couple of different future contracts up here. So give me a moment to take a look at that. We'll try to grab the uh, profile. Here we go. So if we take a look at Bitcoin, which we are, um, now it is still the uh, February contract that's active. 6,200 contracts so far today. Now, in both contracts, whether it's the whether it's the March or the February contract, you can see a new bullish structure profile that has formed. So for the February contract, the key level here to be watching, Rich, is uh, 42.037. If price holds that, support will have held. And if price can close about 43.04, then Bitcoin will make a run to 45.905. On the March contract, the level that price would need to close above would be 43.078. And that would then suggest to move up to 45,965. Now, I'll pull over my other Bitcoin chart. Now, this is just going to show us the March contract, which is fine. And what do we have out here? We probably have an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern that has completed. I'll just draw on the A to B point out here. And then we'll just go ahead and carry that forward. And, uh, mm, you know, it's it seems to me like it's, it's too close. It looks like that A to B equals CD was more like the 26,000 level. Uh, so I don't really have that as a pattern. Uh, what do I have? Oh, I take it back. I see a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. So price actually was moving lower doing less relative energy, and you got that three river morning star pattern configuration. So what Bitcoin should do, as long as it holds that support level, it should move higher. Now we've got that profile resistance on the March contract, 45,965. Then above that rich, you're looking at 49,710. That price would need to close above to give you a change in trend signal. So that's what I see when we take a look at uh, Bitcoin. Well, I do hope that that helps you out. One quick uh, review of my email, see if there's any other requests that have come in. There are not, but there was a question to take like a Disney from Mike on Friday that we just simply didn't get to. So I just remembered that. So if you give me a moment, we'll pull up the uh, Disney charts. Uh, I'm hearing something in my ear. In the Tiger's Den, can you folks still hear me? Yeah, I lost the sound. That's what I thought. Not good. So they lost the sound there. I'm going to keep talking in case it comes back. Mr. Bill, uh, if it does come back, give me the high sign. Give me the high sign. Still not there yet. Okay. Uh, hold on. You're still streaming. Yeah, I know I'm streaming. Um, now back. Okay, thanks. So here we take a look at uh, Disney. Um, price is above the top of its daily profile. 
Price is above, uh, let me get Disney going on one of my other sets of charts out here. Price is above the center of its bullish structure and profile. So this is an indication on a weekly basis. If price can close above 149.48, you should see a move to 164.37. 160 12, though, is going to be a resistance point. That's the bottom of the monthly profile. Um, I see that things have maybe slowed down everywhere. Let's see if I can get my other white background charts up here. There we go. So Disney did have a, it uh, looks like a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom with a hammer candle. Let's confirm that. That's what it visually looks like. And uh, yeah, voila, there you go. So you've got, it was actually a confirmed Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom signal out here. And what Price did a couple of days ago was it got up to the breakdown area, didn't get right to it. That was at 158.53. You know, price effectively could be pulling back to its oscillator and change line of 143.95. But right now, uh, Disney looks pretty good, at least on the daily time frame. Weekly time frame, again, that bullish structured profile and your trade above the center of it. Uh, looks like Disney really does want to move higher. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're going to go out to Philly and speak with uh, John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm very well. Uh, thank you. Uh, Steve, uh, thanks for last week uh, late helping me with uh, the S&P and the NASDAQ 100 uh, daily charts and lower projections. If 
if we come across a uh, expanding C to D after an AB leg down. Yes. Uh, so that was uh, helping me get prepared for possibilities. Yes. Uh, I'm calling you to ask you if you could do the same, help me get prepared for possibilities by looking and showing me just your chart tools for the both the daily and the weekly on the June natural gas charts. And uh, it has nothing to do with any short-term trades. Now that we're coming out of winter very soon, uh, I'll be uh, looking at um, uh, trading say the June, the September, then the December contracts. Uh, uh, so uh, uh, was uh, just looking for your chart work and what the indicators are saying and their positioning there. So uh, that's sure. my question, please. Okay, so well, let's take, take a look at the weekly chart first here. So the weekly chart has a nice road momentum indicator top. That led to a, and that was uh, from two weeks ago. It was a bearish shooting star that formed. Then we had a gap to the downside last week. And uh, price right now has a new bullish structured weekly profile. You can see that today's move so far has just pushed price right up to the top of that green oscillator and change line, which is printed at 422. Now, if price is able to close above that, this is a weekly chart, so that says it closed above it on Friday, that would then suggest a move up to 459. 459 is the top of that weekly profile. If price is unable to take that out and instead price moves lower, then, John, what you'd be looking for, this on a weekly basis, would be between the 362 and 379 level. That's the, that's the weekly time frame. The daily time frame out here, I don't have a real clear pattern or sense of what it wants to do. So my focus would really have to be on that weekly, watch that oscillator and change line. And, uh, John, I apologize we're out of time here, but I do hope that that helped you out. Always good to hear from you, and always good to hear from everybody as well. So stay tuned. you got two more great hours left. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. Tom O'Brien, he'll take us home. I'll see you tomorrow on Tuesday.